Ah, trees, such a great part of nature. There are so many types of them, they're beautiful to look at, and they're important to the ecosystem. Like, uh, what are some examples? They produce oxygen, we can make paper out of them, they're great sources of biodiversity. I love trees. While trees will be the topic of this video, we want some special trees. Not just fictional trees, but sentient trees that can interact with us humans. They can talk to us, use magical powers, or skip the conversation and get right to the action so expect those types of trees from fiction on this list. It also helps if they have faces to differentiate them from less interesting real trees. They don't have to have them, but I like when they do. And joining me for this video is my co-host, Negative X, who will introduce the rest of our criteria. Trees. What wonderful insight. Now, let's plant our top 10 fictional trees. Number 10, the trees from the living forest in Mortal Kombat. Things are weird in Outworld. The skies are purple, the sewers are filled with acid, and there's a forest with faces on the trees. That being said, even the guy who names locations in Outworld saw this forest as an oddity, as they highlight the living part of it in the title of the forest, rather than just treating this like any old nature in Outworld. It's a good name to attract tourism, otherwise they would've just called it Shao Kahn's jungle or something. There's a lot of questions open about these trees. What makes them tick? How did they come to be? Why do they roar occasionally? Are they angry the fighters are encroaching on their territory? Or maybe they're just hungry? In fact, one of the many Mortal Kombat rumors from the 90s was that you could do a stage fatality in Mortal Kombat 2 where you throw your opponent into one of the trees and it eats them. Melina. So in true Mortal Kombat fashion, they took that rumor and made it a reality in Mortal Kombat 9. It's exactly as advertised. Grab, toss, meal. <laughs> See, this is why it's a great tree, because it can fertilize itself by eating people. The only downside is, since they can't actually move, they're really dependent on the kindness of strangers to feed them their defeated enemies. Specifically, this tree is happy, since no matter where you are on the stage, this is the one that always gets fed. The camera angle of the fatality repositions you to mid-screen. Regardless, it's a fun way to end a fight, even though the tree always crunches down right when he gets to the legs. He discards perfectly good bits of food and can't even pick them up because he's rooted to the ground. That is a waste of food, sir. You know, they're just eager beavers. If you've been sitting there waiting for food, you're not gonna open your mouth waiting for it to crawl out. You'll lose the legs. You know what they say about the legs? It goes straight to the hips. I wish he could at least give them to his angry friend over here. He's probably so mad because he never gets fed. Though, maybe it's a blessing in disguise for him, since sometimes the fighters will throw a metal cyborg filled with oil at the tree. I just can't see that being appetizing. I'm not sure if it's worth all the tasty fighters for that one really bad fighter that's also possibly damaging to your digestive system. I feel like that's eating a Hershey kiss with the foil still on it. <laughs> Shang Tsung wins. Fatality. Number 9, the Whomping Willow from Harry Potter. I really love this tree because it's ready to throw down at any moment with anything that comes within its zone of no touchy. And you wouldn't even know this was a living tree by looking at it. No face. How do I know it's not just an ordinary weeping willow? Weeping willows cry. Whomping willows make you cry. Oh, then I'll keep my boundaries. The concept of the tree is interesting, but it has a very one-track mind. It's great at arbitrary fairly smashing and just smashing, though he does have a job, which is still to smash whoever comes his way. The Whomping Willow was actually planted specifically to guard an entrance to a secret passage, so not only can this tree mess you up, but it's also good at keeping secrets. Number 8, the trees from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Obviously, when you're a villain from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, you're going to be a complete joke, but they actually have powers that could be taken seriously in a different setting. They can make plant life grow uncontrollably, and then use that overgrown vegetation to grab whoever pisses them off. They also have the strength of a living tree, which is a lot, since they can rip off human skin with ease and then use it as paper to see how much you like it. Despite all that, you won't have to worry about them if you don't do anything wrong in their forest. But luckily, since Sheik is a horrible person, we get a plot involving the tree's wrath. 
I mean, once they take you away, they can be civil. They'll just bring you to tree court if you disrespect the trees, or dump a vat of grease in their forest like Shake and Carl did. The punishment in tree court is only tree jail or evisceration by a thousand branches of a mighty oak. I won't go over or explain every joke, but the entire sequence is hilarious. My favorite part of the trial involves the trees showing video footage of Shake committing the crime, but the monitor is just a log on a rope, and everybody plays it straight as if they're watching a real replay. I love it. Number 7. The Sinning Tree from Yu Yu Hakusho Anyone who has seen Yu Yu Hakusho knows Kurama is a master of plant life. He can take a single flower or seed and weaponize it. And he's a dreamboat. He uses this ability to create a specific tree in episode 84 of the series. I actually discussed the full episode on my spooky episodes of non-horror anime list, but let's one sentence summarize what's going on. One of the villains, Elder Tagoro, took over over the body of another villain, and Kurama is out to kill him since this guy is one of the most irredeemable characters in the series and he killed one of their allies. Kurama uses his rose whip to plant a seed in Tagoro's head that slowly grew into the sinning tree and latched onto his brain. Now all Tagoro thinks he's doing is having the standard fight with Kurama that they started, only no matter how much he tries, Kurama never dies. The tree makes you have hallucinations of things that put you in extreme stress or pain, but as it does this, it sucks away your life until you die. However, since Tagoro can regenerate his wounds naturally, the tree technically can't kill him, making him have these visions for eternity. It turns this horrifically lethal attack into just hell on earth for him. Honestly, the tree doesn't look too happy that he's also stuck here forever with this chucklehead. I think he had an appointment to go be in Disney's Pocahontas later. That was Grandmother Willow. Different tree. How'd you know they were different? They grow in different parts of the world. This sitting tree grows in the underworld, and Grandmother Willow grows in the new world. Hey, let's not dox Grandmother Willow now. Grandmother Willow at 101 Oak Lane. Willows are also cool trees in real life. You know, the Disney wiki actually says she's more like an oak tree since she's over 400 years old, so I'm not sure what type of tree she technically is. I like how Disney tries to explain that. Instead of just being like, oops a daisy, they're like, oh no, trust us, Grandmother Willow's more like an oak. Willow's really her street name. Number 6, The Magic Tree of Nowhere from Courage the Cowardly Dog. The Magic Tree of Nowhere is not meant to be analyzed by our feeble human brains, but to simply explain, it's a tree, it's magic, it's in nowhere. Kansas. Also, it can talk to you if you look at it closely. Oh, is this the tree with the fa- Oh my god. <laughs> what is wrong with this tree? It's like they stapled a mouth onto a monster and was just like, go with it. The tree can grant almost any wish you want. It doesn't matter if you need new technology, entertainment, or even something bad for everyone. The only wish it couldn't do was how to get rid of its face. Actually, there was one wish he could not instantaneously grant. When Eustace accidentally wishes an illness upon Muriel, the tree could not grant a cure right away. He needed three days to grow medicinal ingredients. He grew the flowers needed, but you didn't have to chop him down. And that was just Eustace doing that out of jealousy of the tree's powers. As it's dying, it gives its final breath to save her. And you know what? Good riddance, because that thing is a fucking nightmare. It also shows his only real weakness is being susceptible to anything that destroys a tree. But at least the tree gets some high road smack talking before Eustace cuts him down. Can you imagine making some furniture out of this thing? Like you get a dining room table and you just got that face staring at you all the time. Stop being mean, I like him. All right, I'll stop making fun of the tree. Number five, Shift Tree the Pokemon. I've always liked how Shift Tree represents the basic growth cycle of a tree. He starts off as an acorn Pokemon, then turns into a small tree with some budding leaves and nipples for some reason, and then he's finally a majestic oak. Actually, I don't know what type of tree he is, but we definitely know, as his name suggests, he's a try. And to continue looking at the details of his name, the suffix of his Japanese name is Teng, to imply he's based off a of Tengu, which is a Japanese mythical creature who acts as a protector of the forest, going with his tree motif. Certain iterations of them are also evil, which might explain why Shift Tree is part dark type. What's up with his feet? That's also a Tengu thing. That seems inefficient. I know his mane is meant to go with the Tengu part of his design, but I like to think the 80s never ended for him and he's just rocking the mullet. While Pokemon has seen a few other trees, like the ghostly Trevenant, the best design in my opinion goes to Shift Tree. 
Wait, what about Pseudo Wudo? Isn't he a better tree? Well, you see, he lacks the most important criterion for this list. He's not a tree, he's just a rock. He's a rock? He's not a rock. The point of his character is he's a human sized rock hiding from attackers by pretending to be a tree since he kinda looks like one. It always backfires on him since any nature lover would inherently water a plant, and rock Pokemon are weak to water, so it's a bad combination. But no one ever said Pseudo Wudo had that Alakazam brain. Wait, what? But his name has wood in it. He's Pseudo Wudo. Actually, his name is where the fake tree thing is referenced. Pseudo Wudo. He's like wood, but not really. Just an appearance. It's a good translation of the pun in his Japanese name, Usoki, which essentially translates to liar tree. Uso being lie and ki being tree. Hope I pronounced all that correctly. I did. Uh, you're, you're really hurting me right now. I'm sorry to ruin your perception of reality. I thought I knew things, but I know nothing. Number four, Tree Beard from the Lord of the Rings. Tree Beard is the leader of the Ents, which is a race of tree people who protect the forest and help the hobbits fight the orcs. In reality, all the Ents are cool and eligible for this list, but I had to give the spot to Tree Beard since he's the oldest and has the best design. His beard is made of moss, and when your name is Tree Beard, that beard better be superb. I love it. Despite being elderly, he isn't afraid to take charge in leading an army. The fight at Isengard ultimately went pretty well. I always felt really bad in that scene where all the Ents are like fighting the orcs, because one of them gets lit on fire, and in the movie, he runs up and dips his head in the water, so he's probably okay. I'm pretty sure in the book, he just burns to death, which is pretty sad. They have this whole long description of how once one of them gets lit on fire, they get even angrier and start tearing things apart at an even more angry, aggressive rate. Oh, well, let's assume that other end is all right so we can just enjoy this man's titular tree beard in peace. Number three, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. Groot is a giant alien tree man and you are all legally mandated to love him. He has the powers you'd expect from his appearance, brute force, limb or branch regeneration, and manipulating wildlife around him because why not? And if his body gets destroyed beyond regeneration, a tiny part of him can be planted and then he gets reborn and becomes highly marketable, too marketable. He has a surprisingly complex vocabulary for a tree. He can say three words, as opposed to most trees, which can say zero. Those three words are I am Groot, which is equally as marketable about him. Don't worry about understanding him though, if you're fluent in alien languages, you'll be able to comprehend what he is saying based on the tone in how he says I am Groot. Take a step back to his first appearance and he said many more words. That being said, he's a significantly more developed character today despite the diminished vocabulary, but I kind of like the camp of his original design. He looks like he's right out of a 1950s sci-fi movie. I like that of all of his tree-based weaknesses he could have had in this iteration, would eat termites were his Achilles heel. Can you imagine coming all the way to Earth and then to have like little bugs just take you down? Oh no, how are we going to survive this? This tree man is taking all of our children. Throw some termites at him. It'll eat him from the inside. Number two, Wispy Woods from Kirby. Wispy Woods is one of Kirby's greatest foes, or at least one of his most reoccurring ones. His powers have varied over the years, but his most consistent attacks involve blowing wind and tossing apples. Of course, the apples thing seems to be a complete oversight on his behalf. It's like he's accidentally letting the apples fall because he's moving around too much, causing them to get detached from his branches. I can't see any other reason why he would intentionally use them. Why else would he think an apple, a delicious part of this balanced breakfast, would be a good weapon? They just help Kirby in the end by giving him sustenance and becoming good ammo. Yeah, well, he's also a tree. I don't know how smart he is. He's doing his best. He's trying. Oh yeah, and then his wind powers seem more like him desperately trying to keep Kirby away with the only thing a tree with a face could actually do when there's no other options. I'm just gonna say, when the Wispy Willows is blowing, he's just trying to cool people down. He's just saying like, hey, you look a little hot. Here's a nice gentle breeze. He's doing his best to move society, and we should give him the respect for that. I feel like Kirby's the one approaching him, and Wispy Woods is just minding his own business. He cries in pain when he loses. Does does this look like the face of a villain to you? Stop dancing!
crying. He's sad. Being one of the biggest characters in Kirby, figuratively and literally, he's a prime candidate for all the Kirby spin-offs, with him actually speaking in Kirby's Avalanche. And what he says bolsters our thoughts about how he's not that bad of a guy. I actually do really, really love this game. It's very much like Dr. Mario or Tetris. But when you're playing the story mode, there's this one moment where Kirby comes across the Wispy Woods, and the Wispy Woods says, Please don't step on my roots, Kirby. And Kirby just yells at him, It's time for a stomp. I'm just saying, if I'm begging somebody not to beat me, and then they start beating me, am I really the bad guy in this situation? What if his roots are really just overgrown in the forest, and we just saw one of them in the cutscene? Maybe Kirby tried to avoid them. He did not. He just attacked. Because Kirby is a psycho. Honorable mentions time, the trees from ActRaiser. They were cool ass trees who did the crab walk and acted as platforms for you. How could you deny the greatness of a tree with legs? You know how I feel about things with legs, positively. The Dryads from Castlevania, they take over trees and try to grab you with their branch arms. They're some of my favorite common enemies in the series. Look at that tree butt. Do you think if he slaps you, he yells, leave me alone? No, because they don't have a mouth. Ooh, wanna what was another? Another boss tree that should get an honorable mention? The Giving Tree. I felt bad for that tree because his childhood friend forgot him, then took all of his apples, branches, tree trunk, which he used to build a boat. Who builds a boat out of a single tree trunk? And then just sat on him when he was old. That was kind of touching. I feel like Palpatine should have mentioned to Annika the tragedy of the Giving Tree. Viewer Juan Gomez wanted us to mention the Chocolate Tree from Dora the Explorer. I've never seen Dora, but here it is as an honorable mention. I'm assuming it's a cow cow tree and produces chocolate. Yeah, but it can talk to you and teach you how to cook unlike the ones in real life, so it's infinitely cooler. And Trent from Yu-Gi-Oh! I always like to put a Yu-Gi-Oh! entry in videos like these, but there was no tree that truly stood out or had some interesting trivia to us. However, if there was a Yu-Gi-Oh! entry, it might have been Trent, solely because he was one of the first cards I ever got in a Metal Raiders pack. Nostalgia aside, he had a horrible level for those stats, and his lore was just that he was the immortal guardian of some forest. Also, the name Trent Trent. It feels like they were pulling out the sea material on this one. This is Trent, the tree. He protects the woods. Maybe he's immortal. Next card. When I think of Trent, I think the guy who gives Kyle his monster energy drinks. And I'm just saying, I don't think this tree's given Kyle monster energy drinks. This tree should be named, I don't know, Sam. That would be a better name. Sam the Savory Sapling is what they called him when he was young. Kyle from what TV show? Oh, that's just how I imagine it. I don't think it's an actual character. For number one, we wanted a tree whose mere presence was powerful, and this just felt like the best choice for the top. Number one, the Great Deku Tree from Legend of Zelda. There are plenty of sentient trees with faces on them in the Zelda games, but the most prolific one is this Great Deku Tree. He's an all-knowing elder and a stage. What's not to love? If it wasn't for the Great Deku Tree, we may have never gotten a journey in Ocarina of Time, since he's the one that sent Navi to tell Link that he's been cursed by Ganondorf, and needs that cursed parasite cut out of him by Link. That was the first mission of the game, so he set all the events in motion for Link to discover the concurrent missions that eventually led him to become the Hero of Time. That means not only is this tree super wise in terms of everything going on in this crazy world, but he knows how to pick a hero. You gotta look beyond his eternally stoic facial expression to figure out what he's thinking. Well, I think the Great Deco Tree is actually just a superbly nice guy. When you first go to him, he gives you the option to go inside or not. And if you say no, he's like, oh well, well come back when you're ready. Alright, well, I guess that's the end of that adventure. Good job, everyone. Good job. Oh, wait, can I not talk to him now? I actually have to leave and come back. Oh, I completely regret my decision. I'm just saying, if I'm dying and I go to the doctor, I'm like, hey, doctor, we can do this whenever you're ready. They said, eh, I'm not really ready today. I'm going to go hang out at home for a little bit. I'm going to go cut some grass looking for some gems. I'd be like, hold the f*** on, dude. I'm dying. Can we put a little pep in that step? Could you try to save me? Please? Please hurry? So Link goes into the tree and kills the enemy, but not before we get tons of hijinks of walking around inside this guy. He's got a whole community in there, though I feel kind kind of bad opening these perfectly placed treasure chests inside of him. How long have they been there? Should we let them be? Are they part of his internal system that he needs to survive? Eh, they're probably all vestigial things unrelated to... Is that a heart? Link, he needs that! Don't! I wonder what other organs or appendages we can get from this tree. Oh, sweet! 
nuts. Do you remember that movie, The Fantastic Voyage, where the doctors go into a tiny ship and get shrunk down and go inside the body? It's like that, except they're stealing organs. We'll take this appendix. Oh boy. Yeah, Link is a monster. A body-robbing monster. Besides giving us a fun journey, the tree's best moment is probably when he tells us the story of the Triforce. I like to think the tree is such a good storyteller that Link can imagine the exact visuals we're seeing perfectly. It's important to note that the great Deco tree actually dies after Link goes in and saves it from the curse. Maybe if he had not spent all that time cutting grass, the great Deku tree could have lived, but we'll never know. And his death proves that his presence is daunting, since after he dies, monsters overrun the forest because the great Deku tree is gone. Maybe if he had left the heart inside, the great Deku tree would still be alive. He may have not physically fought them off, but his essence alone was the only thing needed, and it was the main thing needed to make him our top tree in fiction. Now, what did you think? Who were your favorite trees that we discussed, and what other trees would you plant on this list? Who's underrated, and who's overgrowth? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video.